couple months ago I recorded a video on the best upgrades to do to your Bamboo Lab P1S or X1 carbon printer. In this video I actually wanted to show you guys some maintenance that I do. Now I'm trying a different perspective, uh, almost like a POV so you guys can actually see everything that I'm doing from start to finish. My printer has over 200 hours and I think it's time that I do a really in-depth maintenance and cleaning I guess. Gotta give a quick thanks to Bicu for sending me that Cryogrip Pro Glacier build plate. It's really good, it's got a smooth finish and a very nice honeycomb grip design which allows you to grab it when it's scorching hot right after a print is done. Now everything I show you guys in this video is coming straight from the Bamboo Lab Wiki on their website. Um, so it's nothing fancy, anyone can just go on there and read it. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link down below so you guys can take a look. To jump right into it, the first thing I like to do is to clean everything inside of the printer from filament pieces, dust, debris. It's really important to keep everything nice and clean in there and have everything operating properly. That's obviously the basics. Next, I like to get into the hot end tip. I'm always looking and making sure the hot end tip is not dirty. A dirty hot end tip can cause several issues like under extrusion, over extrusion, poor print quality. Like the most common one for me was the visible gaps. You'll see like almost like gaps in your prints. So obviously your hot end tip has got a, like a silver look. It's metal. So if you see black, you know that it's just clogged with filament. It's always best to just clean it. So the procedure I like to follow, at least this is what I do, is heat up the hot end tip to about 200 degrees. Use a wire brush until you get the gunk off and then finish it off with some rubbing alcohol. Next, I like to clean the x-axis carbon rods, which is what I'm showing you guys here, just using some alcohol, making sure that it's clean of dust and debris. It actually says to not put any grease on these rods here because it creates an abnormal resistance and it would make it very hard to clean in the future as well. And while you guys are at it, make sure you're checking the y-axis and z-axis linear rods and bearings. Now, I've done some research and have not really found anybody have any failures with these rods and the bearings at all but it's always good to just check them, make sure that they're all clean and do not grease them. The wiki suggests to ensure smooth movement and prolong the service life, regular cleaning and anti-rust maintenance are recommended. All right, the next thing I like to do, and I forgot to mention honestly in the beginning, is to dust the inside of the extruder housing. You just wanna pop off the front cap, grab a can of compressed air and spray away. It's important to keep this area clean because there's a lot of moving parts and it's really hot. All right, so next up is the Z-axis lead screws. These obviously move the bed up and down on the z-axis and it's very important to keep these greased because they are constantly moving first thing I like to do is actually clean it with some alcohol just to make sure that there's no old grease on it from the factory or from when you've done it previously um, you can use pretty much any type of grease I'm just using whatever grease packets I had left from when I bought the P1S so make sure you guys are checking your lead screws the wiki recommends that we check these every single three months it should be checked and greased almost forgot to mention when you guys are done doing all of these maintenance steps it's very really important to calibrate your printer and the bed to ensure everything will be running smoothly. All right, next thing that the wiki suggests is to check the filament cutter. This is actually the first time I'm checking after almost 400 hours of runtime on the printer. So all you gotta do is push in that lever and unscrew the bolt at the bottom of it. Your printer should have came with the Allen key that's appropriate for that screw. When I pulled out the filament cutter, mine was actually in good shape, so I didn't even bother replacing it. I just put it back in. So it's pretty easy to change. I just checked mine, it was all good. So that's basically it. I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything. And before you guys go, make sure you check out my 3D printed organizers at osmosessentials.com.